know Mumbai as uh, it's of a seven islands and uh, there was Greek in between. Uh, but we don't know about uh, uh, Salsate Island basically. So if you see this map, here it's written that Sashti Island and into bracket it's a Salsate. So that was known as uh, basically Sashti Island. Sashti, uh, the word has been derived from a Marathi word. It calls Sahasashta. Sahasashta means the group of 66. So there were two Sashtis. One was Malar Sashti and another was Malod, Malod Sashti. And basically, this is the Mumbai uh, we are talking about. So whenever we start talking about Mumbai, we normally think that this South Mumbai is the original Mumbai and then the suburb has grown. But which is it is not true. So whenever people start talking about Mumbai in ancient period, that is uh, right from 1st century BC, 2nd century BC, even in the 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century, people are talking about this Mumbai, which we right now know as the suburbs of Mumbai. Basically, that was the Sashti and that was the original Mumbai when people started talking about it in the ancient world. So this is the very first thing. Second thing we uh, know about this is uh, there was there was a small piece of land which was passing through that Madagascar island and then started the volcanic eruption and it started flowing towards this, this and then that got attached to Indian play. And this is how uh, the formation of Maharashtra, formation of Gujarat, part of uh, Andhra Pradesh, part of Karnataka and part of Madhya Pradesh, MP has formed. Uh, so this land of Mumbai has been formed uh, with the volcanic eruptions. So do we find the evidence for that whatever has happened 65 million years ago? So this is the first secret which I am sharing it to you. This is the Kaneri top. So top of the Kaneri hill where there are 110 caves. So if you will go and uh, stand right on the top of that Kaneri hill and look around you, you will find a crater getting like this. So you can see a crater of the Kaneri volcano. So whenever you are standing absolutely on the Kaneri top, you are absolutely standing on the mouth of a volcano which was there 65 million years ago and which was responsible. Uh, that was one of the responsible thing for formation of Mumbai. So this is the very first thing. Do we have second evidence of it? Do we have a second secret for it? So the second secret tells us about this. This is a volcanic bomb. So what is a volcanic bomb? Basically, uh, when there is a volcanic eruption, uh, the down under below, there are various rocks. They get thrown up in the air and uh, not for us, a small, uh, small distance, but maybe for five, six kilometers or about 10 kilometers up in the air. And uh, because of the volcanic eruption, this rocks gets melted because the temperature is around uh, 1,000, 5,000, 5, sometimes 6,000 or sometimes, sometimes even 10,000 uh, 10, degrees centigrade. So what happens that this rocks gets melted and with that lava, uh, with this much of a temperature, it gets thrown up in the air for so many kilometers. And when they start coming down, uh, the speed is very high. And when they hit the earth, it explodes. And that's why it's called a volcanic bomb. But how to identify this? And uh, so you must see a S-like spiral shape. So uh, in our very childhood days, what we used to do, uh, we used to get a paper, uh, tear it into pieces and just release it uh, from the air. So uh, if you just remember, uh, the pieces of that paper, they come spirally. They just don't come uh, just down like anything, you know. So they come with a spiral motion. So because that spiral motion is because of the gravitational force, force of Earth. So when this uh, lava with that... Uh, uh, rocks which has been melted that comes down heavily from uh, air to this towards the earth uh, it also comes in a spiral motion and when it explodes heavily 
on earth that takes that s shape or the spiral shape so again if you will go and visit the kaneri top you will find so many volcanic bombs so this is the secret which tells us what happens 65 million years ago next secret is uh, this is the formation again a lava formation it's called a pilo lava so what happens when there is an volcanic eruption nearby a water body uh, it gets vaporized in a minute because the temperature is very high and that vapor gets trapped into this lava and that tries to escape from a small hole so when it tries to escape from a small hole you get a structure pillow structure like this and so we have this pillow lava so why this pillow lava is very important for us and why this is one of the major secret of solset i'll tell you that this is i repeat this is world's largest exposed pillow lava structure again i'm repeating this is world's largest exposed pillow lava structure there is no other place in the world where you find uh, this pillow lava in so much so range so uh, the request to the government is uh, we must protect this as a geological heritage site right now this place is in sanjay gandhi national park if you will visit sanjay gandhi national park and uh, we uh, from entry point we go towards uh, kaneri caves there is a small uh, bridge on a daisar river so in that daisar river's bedrock you will find this pillow lava structure if you are going to visit next time just do visit this place next is this structure uh, this structure will remind you uh, a small hillock from andheri it's called gilbert hill so this is again uh, made out of lava this is a basalt it's called columnar basalt so if you will see it you will see it it someone has taken uh, a measurement tape and cut it like this properly with the lines okay so this is a, a proper columnar basalt so you will see this columns so what is the secret because we know that there is a gilbert hill a small hillock which is made up of this the secret is actually this structure started from gilbert hill and that the end of this structure was towards bhainder so uh, if you will go bhainder there is a small village called dongri so this basalt columnar basalt actually the hillock started from andheri at uh, presently that uh, gilbert hill area and that went through jogeshwari goregaon malad kandivli borivli and this was the end point this is the end point of bhainder which i am showing you the photograph so in between whatever was there we have lost absolutely lost now we have only two structures in mumbai one is at bhainder which i am showing it to you right now and one is at gilbert hill there are two more structures one is at times of india hill at kandivli if you will go through that uh, area from uh, from the highway western express highway and you will start from uh, borivli and go towards malad Uh, on the left hand side is a kandivli a small hillock uh, on that hillock you will find the times of india press is right now there so uh, this structure you can again see there and uh, the recently happening recent happening in mumbai there was a landslide and that landslide was absolutely of this uh, columnar basalt only actually geologists have uh, earlier told them that uh, this needs to be protected but uh, as you know how government works uh, and there was a landslide so we are moving to next so there was a question by khaki that do you know who the uh, original mumbai kers were so we are talking about original mumbai kers right now and this is the proof of original mumbai kers these are when we are talking about mumbai kers i am not talking about human habitation but i am talking about the living habitation very first living habitation of mumbai so this is the fossil of a frog and this is the fossil of a tortoise which was found at uh, found in mumbai so there are so many fossils found in mumbai so these are two major fossils which have been dated as the oldest 
fossils of Mumbai. So these two living organisms are the original Mumbaikers, I say, of Mumbai, a tortoise and a frog. So one more secret of Mumbai. So we Mumbaikers don't know about. There's a submerged forest down below the sea, very much near to the Mumbai coast. So there's a dock called Princess Dock. So when the uh, shipbuilding, uh, shipbuilding area and shipbuilding construction for Princess Dock, Dock started, uh, then the geologist came to know that there was the uh, total forest of Acacia. Acacia, we call it Babul in Mumbai or in Hindi, in Marathi and in Hindi. So this was the forest of Acacia submerged totally uh, down below 30 meters into Mumbai sea. So this is not the photograph of that, but this is the representation of what, uh, how they look like. Okay. So this is the representational photographs of a submerged forest. Again, one more thing, and this is very important. Uh, the uh, man you see in this photograph is Colonel Toad. Colonel Toad is the person who told us or who revealed us that uh, in the Stone Age, when we talk about there are three ages, you know, Stone, uh, Stone Age, then Bronze Age, and then Iron Age. So we have learned that into our history. So the question was when there was Stone Age world over, were there human habitation in Mumbai? So yes, Colonel Toad had found that human habitation, evidence of the human habitation of uh, in Mumbai, basically. So what happened actually, Colonel Toad, he was the supervisory officer uh, when there was a filling up process was going on for Back Bay reclamation. And in that reclamation process, uh, the, truck, uh, the truck load was coming and they were just uh, cutting down the debris. And Colonel Toad could see that there are two, three stone tools. Uh, some of the stone tools were like uh, blades, actually. And he just asked that guy that where this uh, thing, all the things have come from. And they told him that either they, there are two spots. One is uh, they are quarrying it from Kurla. And second, they are quarrying, they are quarrying it from Kandivli. So that was that part was from Kandivli. Uh, that was the uh, mentioned thing in that lease. So Colonel told, uh, he just went on a horse, horseback, and he went to Kandivli. And this is the Poisar River at that time. And in this Poisar River thing, uh, very much near to this river, he has found that very first stone tools in Mumbai. So even in the stone tools, when we talk about, uh, there are three phases, earlier phase, middle phase, and then the uh, latest phase. So we found all three types of stone tools in Mumbai. Uh, these are the sketches of the stone tools found at Kandivli. And this has been done by Colonel Toad. So there was, we know now that uh, there was a human habitation when we talk about uh, uh, basically a uh, stone age. So uh, where have they found these uh, stone tools? So this is the map and this shows you that uh, this is that uh, Kandivli, Kandivli Borivli area. This is uh, uh, very much into the uh, bank of uh, Daisar river. Then this is Kandivli area. Uh, then this is Malad. Then this is uh, in between Goregaon and Jogeshwari. Then this is at Mad Island, Manori, Marve. So these are the points where they have found the stone tools. One more secret of the Mumbai. If you see this map, it's written that Padan Hill. There is no Padan Hill now. So this Padan Hill has got Mumbai's oldest cave. But we can't see that oldest cave right now because we have crushed that Padan Hill and used the stone for various purposes, building constructions plus construction of a road. So there is no Padan Hill now and we have lost the very old cave of Mumbai. Next is, uh, I think Khaki had a lecture of Dr. Suraj Pandit and that was about Sopara. So uh, you will wonder why I am mentioning Sopara and why I am talking by talking about Salset. So when you talk about Salset right now, so actually this Salset starts from uh, Vasai Creek and ends up at Bandra. Okay. 
so mala sopara was very much part of that and we find a uh, second century uh, second century bc ashokan edict a part of that ashokan edict at nala sopara so nala sopara was one of the famous uh, port at that time so if you will go to various ancient texts uh, maybe greek text or uh, maybe something other texts you will find that whenever they mention they are mentioning a uh, shurparak so shurparak uh, is basically nala sopara and that was one of the famous port in the world in second century bc so uh, whenever you are going to find uh, the notes about the trades in second century bc third century bc up till uh, 17th century you are going to find everywhere the mention of a shurparak port which is right now we know at nala sopara the word shurparak uh, it has uh, uh, transited into you know shurparak soparak sopara and because there are two villages nala and sopara now we know that as nala sopara and that was the capital city at that time next is uh, uh, coming back to our salset island exploration project so before that project uh we the students of uh, mumbai university or the experts from the mumbai university we with our students were roaming around in mumbai everywhere uh this present map i am showing you uh, it is from uh, mahim and you will see that uh, there is a votive stupa at mahim just besides that sitla devi temple then there are various remains uh, we found of various centuries in mahim uh some of our uh, students they went to uh, mahim police station so this is the photograph of a mahim police station and they were very much surprised to see that these are the uh, structural temple remains from uh, around 10th and 11th century and they are now part of this pillar of uh, pillars of mahim police station so when we came to know uh, these things Uh, i went to the police station and i told that jamadar that uh, i wanted to file an fir so uh, he was like okay tell me uh, against whom you wanted to file so i told him mumbai police so he said what so i told him yeah mumbai police because you have cemented these antiquities of 10th century 11th century in your police stations pillars so he also got shocked but uh, right now we need to work on this we need to take out this and this uh, some restoration process should have been done uh, they should not be uh, as like they are right now cemented into these pillars okay but uh, this tells you that there are various remains from various centuries in mumbai and we need to look look out for that uh one of the major thing the next secret we are moving to is uh, towards kanheri so we know that kanheri has got 110 caves but uh, this 110 caves so uh, when i was talking with dr suraj pandit and we were interacting and uh, we had a discussion that you know whatever what happens that whenever there is uh, someone uh, is going to construct a uh, construct a building uh, people come over there construction workers come over there and they will have their shanty first and then they will go for and start a construction work so we were discussing and the question came to our mind was uh, where was the shanty of the uh, construction workers of or the excavation workers of kanheri and then we uh, went with the permission of sanjay gandhi national park with the permission of asi into the deep forest of sanjay gandhi national park and behind the uh the uh, 110 caves we could found uh second century bc seven caves of second century bc so you know these structures again tells us that uh there was uh, a larger size human habitation there then again we were ro roaming around uh, in the area of marol and here you will see uh, there is a small stele this has got inscription but people come over here and they uh, pray this as a shani dev so they pour oil over it and now that inscription has gone we can hardly read uh, three or four words from this inscription only so again then uh, while moving towards are uh, very much near to marol uh, what happens is that there are again uh, various remains of uh, you know various temples so this is basically a bharvahak of a temple okay which will lift that pillar up and uh, uh, 
that's the use of that bharavah but if you will go to ra uh, you will see that this bharavah someone uh, thought that this is a ganpati and now this bharavah has been uh, worshiped as ganpati and there's a uh, uh, there's a plate there that this is a ganesh temple of ra but this is basically a bharavah and this bharavah tells you that there must have been uh, around that place uh, a bigger size temple so how do you come to know that that must have been a bigger size temple the size of this bharavah tells you that how much uh, or uh, exactly the how much size of a pillar uh, he must have taken up okay so from that size one can derive at a point that yes there must have been a bigger size temple again when we were roaming around in mahakali area so we know that in andheri area there's a mahakali uh, ma there are there are mahakali caves so but when we'll go to the history and deep into the history we'll come to know that there is no mahakali devi at all okay but these caves are the mahankal caves mahankal is the buddhist deity that's from the buddhist tantrism and that deity uh these caves were dedicated to that mahankal you can see that mahankal karada wood over this stupa so uh, so many things have happened in mumbai and now we know that place as a mahakali again same thing with uh, jogeshwari because actually there are, if you go and visit jogeshwari temple you will see a devi there a jogeshwari devi being worship but uh, the caves are of yogeshwara and then when Uh, this shakti cult took over yogeshwara caves that was converted into a temple of a devi and then now uh, that was again uh, earlier yogeshwari devi and that yogeshwari now we know as jogeshwari because in uh, linguistics ya gets always replaced by uh, j okay and the famous example for this is jaslok hospital so we all know jaslok hospital but do you know the again a secret do you know the original name of jaslok hospital is the yashlok hospital that year got replaced by jaslok and now even jaslok hospital on their later head says that it's a jaslok hospital but when that started that was the yashlok hospital the uh, they, uh, people should uh, with the disease they should come here they should get treated here with a success they must go to their home back so that was the basically thing uh again we are going to uh, next secret and that is about thana so why thana when we are talking about solset so thana was part of solset basically and if you if you are interested in the history of mumbai uh, you will go to gazetteers and you will find that and you will maybe you will surprise that uh, if you want to have the uh, ancient text about or the information about uh, mumbai then you will have to go to thana gazetteer why thana gazetteer because thana was the capital city of solset at that time right from 10th century and 10th century onwards thana was the capital city and because that was the capital city associated with trade that was shri sthanak means uh, uh, the residence of lakshmi so that shri sthanak thanak thana so thana has the word thana has been derived by this and if you will go and visit thana you will see uh, so many places so many things in uh, so many remains in thana so this is the kaukineshwar temple's uh, major shivalinga but if you will go and visit thana uh, so we were going through thana uh, once and uh, uh, for a cup of tea we just waited that at a tea stall and uh, that chai wala told us that saab jara baitho idhar and this was the seat so if you will see these are the pillars of uh, the remains of the pillars of 10th century temple a bigger size temple again from just the size of this pillar one can come to know how much bigger size of the temple that must have been so uh, thana was part of this salt set again what has happened in thana if you will roam around uh, in the area of charai you will surprise again surprise to know that uh, uh this is the cross but this cross has been uh, is standing on a hindu temple's amalaka so amalaka of a hindu temple uh, is part of that capital of a temple and this cross 
is just now standing on that Hindu Amalaka, a Christian cross, a metropolitan city. Okay, so you will find so many things. So if we want to know the secrets of Mumbai or secrets of Salt Lake, how and where we are going to look for? So this is an inscription from 16th century, and where it is? It is in this well. So if you want to reveal the secrets of Mumbai or secrets of Salt Lake. you need to go and look deep into various aspects of various things so this is one of the thing from 16th century and 16th century inscription is there now this photograph is from bandra so what we need to do is we need to look for things uh, everyone has got eye but the eye sight is a major thing so this is a compound wall of a church and you will find a small remain there so this is from the chimbai extension road so uh, there are various things all over mumbai all over mumbai this is from juhu uh, there is a family called rane family and if you will go and visit uh, exactly opposite to iskon uh, there is a mukteswar temple and just besides mukteswar temple there is a rane complex and uh, mr rane who is no more there now uh, he used to Uh, roam around uh, from you know Goregaon to Bandra and used to collect these things, these remains. So in his compound, you will find remains uh, even from third century till sixteenth century. So uh, this can be a very good site museum. Actually, this is what I think. Uh, so these are again remains all over. So where you need to look for? So again, uh, this is a masjid. and if you will see uh, very minutely here there's a small inscription when that has uh, when that was built uh, again this is a plaque and this is a memorial plaque of a, a trader came down from baghdad to dharavi so if you will go and visit dharavi graveyard you will find that uh, near that graveyard there is a darga and in that darga Ibrahim Rahimullah Baghdadi's plaque is there, and again, this is from 17th century. So there are so many things. So this plaque tells you that there were traders used to come from Baghdad to Mumbai because uh, now we uh, tell people that Mumbai is the financial capital of India, but this is, uh, yeah, this is true. Now it is a financial capital of India, but this is the half truth. because that was the financial capital of india even in the second century bc and right from second century bc we have evidence of the trade uh, with a uh, world over of mumbai so we have so many remains so this this is the major secret again so this is the vairala lake and in vairala lake again this is vairala lake is in uh, malad area that malad manori that area and we have found evidence of uh porcelains and uh glazed ware from 12th century and 13th century this photograph is from manori and recently in this salset island exploration project we have found this i must tell you a story because we were finding so many things at uh, you know mahim then at kanheri we have found caves then uh, somewhere uh, our students have found some things so uh three and four organizations they came together one of them was uh, institution trust the india study center then sathe college and uh, one of the major thing was cems center for extramural studies of mumbai university so all these three institutions came together we applied a permission to asi we applied permission to mumbai police commissioner to bmc commissioner and we all got permission and right from 2015 16 2016 and 17 and third part small part of 18 we had worked for uh, almost four years and we have found these many things so uh, what i am right now showing you to you is from manori and we have found these stone tools from manori uh, uh, we have roped in one of the experts in the stone tools uh, from aisar mohali and he has dated these stone tools found at manori 17000 year old so i think 17000 year old is a quite ancient period and we are finding so many things in mumbai uh, i mentioned about that monochrome glazeware and porcelain from 
uh, 12th century and 13th century. These are the remains and the photographs of that. Even in Mumbai, you find so many inscriptions. Some of the inscriptions are in Farsi. Some of the inscriptions are in Portuguese. And uh, when you started re uh, reading these inscriptions, uh, you get surprised. Uh, uh, there are more and more surprises in Mumbai's inscriptions. So apart from this, uh, there are, uh, if you will study ethnographic data of Mumbai, and then uh, so many cultural secrets, maybe they will come to the floor. So uh, if you will visit uh, Dharavi or either if you will visit that Malad Manori area or Gorai area, uh, many people get surprised because, you know, uh, basically the Kohli's residing there uh, are uh, Christians uh, major, Christians in major. But, you know, uh, if you will go uh, to their marriages, uh, a day prior to marriage, they will perform Hindu rituals. And uh, means even the haldi and all that will be uh, performed by these Christian Kohli's. And on the day of uh, their marriage, they will go to a church and they will have that performance. So this ethnographic data tells you that uh, they were earlier Hindus and got converted into. And even in uh, various Kohli's who are now Christians, if you'll go uh, to their... Uh, if you'll go to their inside room, you will find a small devara, you know, even this police carry. So this is the ethnographic data and we need to understand this, why people are, uh, why people, uh, you know, they're, they're like this because uh, for us or for uh, people from 21st century, we think of, you know, categorized things, you know, that Christians, they are Christians, they are Maharashtrians, they are Hindus, they are Muslims. But even in Muslims, you will find the Hindi, Hindu rituals because we all are uh, basically human beings. And uh, basically the soil of India is of a assimilative nature. So it is not like outside. So in assimilation process, these things happen. And these are some of the secrets of Mumbai. Uh, these are the Exar Virgals, uh, now better known for uh, their intricate carving. And they show us the battle uh, in uh, 11th, 12th century uh, for trade. And this is a sea battle, basically. So if you will see down under, down below, you will find that uh, there's the depiction of a sea battle. Okay. So one must visit this Exar Virgal because these Exar Virgals are uh, India's one of the finest intricately carved Virgals. So uh, Virgals are basically uh, memorial stones of a war hero. So this is of a king from uh, 11th century. So this is in Mumbai. So now we are moving to the eastern suburbs of Mumbai. So we started uh, from Bandup and Bandup was the area under me. So what has happened in our uh, Salset Island exploration project, we had five, we had divided this Salset Island into five. One was led by Dr. Kurush Dalal. Second was by Dr. Uh, Suresh Pandit, third was by uh, Prachi Moghe, fourth was by Dr. Dandekar, and fifth and sixth by myself. Uh, the area was from uh, Kurla to Mulun and from Are to Ghatkopar. So when we uh, 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 at Bandup, uh, we could see, you know, that there is a Bandupeshwar temple. And if you will go to Gazette Note, it will, say, uh, it will tell you that uh, the name of the Bandup has been derived from the Bandupeshwar temple. But it is not true. Why it is not true? Because archaeology and the ethnographic data tells us that uh, never ever God uh, gives a name to a place, but it's a vice versa. The place gives name to a God. Okay, so the name of Bhanduk must have been there from earlier period. And when I worked on that and researched on that Bhandupeshwar temple, I was surprised that Bhandupeshwar temple itself came uh, just 45 years back and there was no temple. And why that temple came? Because there was uh, an extra railway line uh, going to be constructed uh, from Bhandup uh, towards Thana. And while digging uh, work going on for that extra line, uh, they found four uh, ancient uh, Shivalingas. And one of the Shivalinga is there right now in that Bhandupeshwar temple. So I was a little surprised that why, why then, then uh, how that Bhandup, the name has been arrived from. So I went to uh, I went back to my study area to bend back to my research and then came to know that uh, the mood, uh, the basic word uh, is bhand and bhand has got various 45 meanings and one of the meaning of the bhand 
is a, a small creek very small creek coming deep inside uh, inside is called bhand and then that reminded me that i went to bhandup and i i was talking to one of the police and he told me uh, because i told him i just asked him that uh, how you go through this small creek so he told me ami bhandi chalavto yani uh we uh, we just get our bhandis through this uh, small creek so i was again surprised and then that connected me that bhandi and bhand so bhand means that creek deeply coming inside and the boat which which is a smaller in size you take that deep inside it's called bhandi so uh, we have used etymology and then we have come to know that in bhandu uh, at five places this small bhandas comes inside and the, that's must have been the reason that the name of bhandup it has derived from again we at bhandup we have found a small virgal and a small gadhegal so uh, gadhegal is basically a donation given by king uh, of a land and uh, this tells you that uh, this were wherever this uh, this has been found uh, that must have been the place uh donated by then king and we have dated this uh, gadhegal and this virgal uh, to 12th and 13th century so there was a king uh, we get uh, the information of that king from uh, various inscriptions found in mumbai one of the inscription was found even at bandu so uh, this is the tulsi lake area uh, this has found at ghatkopar so when we move to ghatkopar we will again little bit surprise uh we know ghatkopar but we don't know that there was no ghatkopar at all uh earlier in earlier stage there were two villages one was ghatla and one was kopar but you know in the procession process of an urbanization uh wahan ki basti bad gayi and then that uh, they two villages merged together and now we have that ghatkopar so that ghatla village uh as the name suggest ghat okay so there was a small pass uh, you will have to uh, climb the hill and go through that pass and you will land up into kopar and the area of chembur and turbe so that was the thing uh so whenever we were uh, moving around uh, with this solsit projects uh, we were little bit surprised to find caves so uh, if you will ask anyone that where are the caves in mumbai uh someone will tell you that there are elephanta there is there's jogeshwari then at magathane we have caves at mandapeshwar we have caves and the major cave complex is uh again that mahakali and kanheri but apart from that the secrets will tell you that there are caves in the chopadpattis of mumbai and we have found many so one of the so i am showing you three or four caves we have found in mumbai uh, chopadpatti so if you will go to this sayan shitla devi village uh, you will come to know that this is absolutely a cave structure but if you will go inside what they have done is they have cemented it and they have tiled it so one will not come to know that this was a cave structure but if you will uh, come outside of this temple you will come to know that that was the earlier cave structure so what they have done they have cut this cave structure off and they have raised this cement structure over there so we have lost one of the major cave at sayan uh, at gundavli in andheri you will again surprise to know that there is a gundavli jhopadpatti all over here and uh, when our students went there archaeology students went there they found the cave structure here so this is a proper rock cut cave structure a proper rock cut cave structure in gundavli jhopadpatti uh, we went to my team went to antophil we have found is in this uh, gadhiya mandir area again a cave structure this is the gadhiya which they worship and one of the major thing was mukta devi but i was uh, when i went there i was absolutely surprised to see a cemented structure because i myself have lived in uh, chunabatti right from 1975 to 79 and uh, at the dashara we used to visit this cave of mukta devi over the mukta devi hill and uh, when i went there in this solset island exploration project that was a great shock to me because earlier i had gone to that uh, cave and i had worshiped that devi but i could not see any cave there over right now 
and it's absolutely a cemented structure because they have uh, crushed that total cave structure right now. So there is no cave structure right now. But we have found a cave at Chunabatti, Chafegalli, Jopadpatti. So when we move around Chafegalli, Jopadpatti, uh, you will have to, uh, there are rock cut steps uh, taking you down to this cave. And this is a small cave structure. And uh, this is an unidentified deity in this Chunabatti cave structure. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Zamkhedkar, Dr. A.P. Zamkhedkar, the famous archaeologist and uh, one time director of Maharashtra archaeology. We have identified this, that this must have been a Mahishasur Mardini. Uh, but this is eroded uh, uh, very much right now. So you just can't identify that, yes, this is this particular deity. But this is a proper cave structure. You will have to go through that rock cut steps down below and you will find this. So there are cave structures in Mumbai. So again, at IRB complex at Chandivali, we have found this uh, Gadhegar. So there is a story behind this. Uh, while we, uh, in my team, there were two, uh, two students. One was Snehal Pawar and one was Nishiganda Usapkar. So both of them were finishing the work uh, of that particular day and they were going to their home, respective homes. And while going through, they could see just uh, a, a small part of this stele uh, coming down over, uh, coming coming up from that earth, you know. So they just stopped there. They just photographed this part and they send send it across to me, and I could see that this is a proper gadhegar. So uh, I just told them that tell that guy at Mandir that uh, this is a gadhegar uh, needs to taken out of out from that other thing, and uh, we need to keep it separate because this is an antiquity. Uh, so uh, they told me that, okay, uh, after four or five days, we'll go there and uh, we'll discuss with them. But when they uh, moved there four, after four or five days, they were again shocked because uh, the puja was performed over this. And uh, the pujari there, uh, he thought this is, uh, uh, this is something, uh, you know, very sexist. And this needs to be uh, uh, immersed into some pond or at sea. Because he was surprised because uh, this has got vermilion. So he could not, uh, you know, think of what it is exactly. But because of vermilion, this must have been some God's connection. But this is the sexist thing. So we must immerse. So they performed the puja and they were going to immerse that into Pavai Pond. And I reached there. I had a little quarrel with them. I called police. And now uh, the owner of the, I contacted the owner of this mandir, that Jatin Bhai. And he was kind enough. He is a well-read person. So I told him the historical aspect of this. And now this has been restored at Chandivli. But you know, if you will move around in Mumbai, you will come to know that there are so many things of 10th century, 11th century, 9th century, 8th century. We are just uh, going just besides that and we don't know about it. Again, this is a Tulsi Lake. This is very important because we have found microliths in Tulsi Lake. I myself have found these are the microliths found at Tulsi Lake, again from the uh, Stone Age area, Stone Age, uh, Stone Age part. So we have found microliths at Tulsi Lake and this was the new discovery in Salsat area. Uh, this is from a Salpa Devi temple of Mulund and you will see that uh, this Salpa Devi, uh, this has been worshipped, this is, this is the remain and this sculptural remain has been worshipped as Sita. But if you go through properly, you will see there are two legs of the sculptures. There is a frog-like structure. There's something. So there's some image here. But now vermilion is applied over and over every day. This is again a Mahishasur Mardini. This is a Mahi, this is uh, that a lion part of it. And she is standing on it. But so much so vermilion applied. So much so. You can't identify it. You just can't see it you just can't see the original image. So whenever we are going to temples in Mumbai, we need to look for this. Uh, again, uh, again, there was a shock for me. You know, uh, uh, just read this. It will tell you that Udasin Ashram Bada Akhada Baba Ji Ki Jhopdi. Can you see? This is, is this a Jhopdi? This is a three-story structure. So I was again surprised. I went there to this Brahmadeshwar temple. I just asked them, Yar, ye to jopdi nahi hai. Ye to teen majli imarat hai. To kya hai ye? To bole ki nahi, 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 wo pahle jopda tha. Wo baba ji yahan par rehte the. Wo cave mein meditation karte the. Again, I was surprised. Where's the cave? So there's a small room over here. 
where babaji used to sit and he's had his jhopda and there is a cupboard kept over the cave structure so there is a cave down below one only a person can go sit there and meditate so there is again a cave structure so i am talking about the cave structures in mumbai apart from all these so in uh, 2017 we had found this inscription and this inscription is very important for mumbai because if you will read this it is called mahima bimbasthana so uh, this mumbai is very name in ancient period in 1368 because this inscription is of uh, a vessel of gujarat sultanat by name it is written over here sultan peroz shah yani uh, sultan firoz shah so firoz shah tughlaq and his vessel was hambir rao so its name is Uh, written over here so hambira rao was ruling over mumbai in 1368 this is a proper dated inscription we have found it in barc and this is the only inscription in mumbai which tells you the then name of mumbai that bimbasthana so mahim bimbasthana again you will surprise that this inscription mentions so many things so many places you know so whenever you have a uh, you have an agreement with the people uh there are witnesses to that so there are five witnesses to this agreement this agreement is between a king he has donated a land a parcel of land uh from nanade village so nanade village is down below brc right now where brc stands uh that has been deserted because they had shifted to other side of it uh so that nanade village the uh a plot from a nanade village was donated by this king and this mentions so this mentions that there are four witnesses who are the witnesses the witnesses by name marolkar the witnesses by name maladkar the witnesses by name devnarkar so this inscription tells you that in 1368 there was marol people staying it marol were known as marolkar people there was a village called devnar the place name and uh, the, the uh, people from there used to be known as devnarkar uh, maladkar uh, marolkar so this inscription tells us reveals us various secrets so this is one of the inscription if you want to read the full paper of it asiatic society has published our paper on this uh, again trombe kolivada so uh, we have found this monochrome glassware so you know whenever i was thinking about mumbai i used to think there used to be a question in my mind that when shivaji was ruling over this maharashtra what was there in mumbai what was happening in mumbai and this is the inscription we have found this is in portuguese and this tells us what was what happened in mumbai when shivaji was ruling over this maharashtra so uh, this inscription tells us that there was a captain portuguese captain came here with three ships and he died here and this is his memorial stone and there's a proper date over here by which we can come to know that this is the exact period when shivaji was ruling over in maharashtra so this is one of the major secret i think uh, now we'll come to the end of this session and one of the major thing i'm uh, telling you tonight right now because it is it comes from your cultural memory okay so now we are talking about mumbai metropolitan region which starts at dahanu and ends up at mangao so this will be a mumbai metropolitan region so uh, who 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 decides this that it will start from dahanu and it will end up at mangao so there is a cultural memory you carry from generations to generations and you if you will go through the pages of history you will come to know that uh, that used to start from sanjan where parsis landed and that that is now in gujarat but that was part of maharashtra by that time and uh, it starts from dahanu all the things starts from dahanu and sanjan and i will connect it in next slide and then uh, everything up to chaul and then next to mangao was the area of a trading a community and that was the major area of that so that cultural memory has told us that yes this mmr can be stretch out from dahanu to mangao so that comes from the cultural memory of the generations we have uh, so we are now uh coming to the core part of it which uh which is again the major thing uh we know this is a kanheri complex structural remains and on the other side exactly of the kanheri 
there is in between a forest area and where that forest area ends there you get a place called marol okay so these are the structural remains of a huge temple absolutely a huge temple from 11th century in the marol police line area if you will go to marol marol police line you will find these remains and this remains tells you that how much big that temple must have been okay and from the uh, various bakars there so there is a bakar called sashti ji bakar so there is a text of uh, mumba devi ji bakar sashti ji bakar so from this we now uh, come to know that there was uh, this marol was the capital city right from 15th century uh, before that the capital city uh, was at mahim and then that was shifted to marol so there is a area called are in between this on the uh, southern end we have a capital city which is marol and on the uh, northern end you find kanheri so why are is important so when we went through are we had found so many remains in are we have exhaustively worked in are and we could find that there are 37 padas and we have uh, we have list you know where we have found what remains we have found so this is the table this tells you that are is a, a area which is absolutely rich absolutely rich in archaeological findings and archaeological remains again interesting interesting things uh, we collected we had collected anthropological data and what we could uh, there was a surprise that from this 37 padas uh, people have come over either from sanjam or from dahanu again this connects you to that cultural memory of 10th century 11th century so there was a major battle when there was muslim invasion in sanjan and dahanu area people from there migrated here so why they directly came to are because this is the most fertile land on this mumbai salset island thing so they have directly come to are because that was the most fertile land dahanu and sanjan area is the most fertile land so there is the migration from this fertile land they started they must be they must have been searching for the land you know that which is most fertile and they directly came down here settled down in 11th century in are and they have their various padas so what does this tells us this tells us so i have come up with a theory which i have presented as a research paper so what my theory is so uh, we need to understand a small part of theory of an urbanization so what is the difference between a village and an urban structure so basically in urban structure uh, in urban area we don't produce our uh, whatever we want to okay it gets produced at village level we have our farming activity at village level and there is no farming done in an urban area so what what does people do in an urban area there are people with various skills and they are engaged with the trading activity or the industrial activity and they get their food from outside so always uh, unless to have a surplus food nearby an urban area uh, then only uh, you are going to have an urban center so prerequisite of an urban center is you must have around you a surplus food area or the most fertile land so we are, again we are going back to uh first century second century third century when the cave complex of kaneri cave came okay why could have been uh there 110 caves at kaneri because monks were non food producers okay they used to get their food uh when they used to come down every noon with the begging bowl okay so there must have been in around area or around uh, villages there must have been the surplus food Uh, because you will find yuan shang uh, that chinese monk who came he came down here in 6th century he uh, he mentions that uh, he could see 3500 monks so if 3500 monks staying there in 6th century uh, they are then they are not only the caves but that's the urban complex even in buddhism and jainism we tell them that these both the religions are urban religions why urban religions because these religions uh, people get monk okay 
they, have, they get into the monkhood and uh, monk, monks are non-food producers. So unless you have surplus food, these religions can't come up. And unless you have surplus food in the area of around Kaneri, you can't come up with a complex which is uh, of the habitation of 3,500 people. Again, same thing applies to Maroe. If you want to have a capital city, you will not be having a farmers in capital city, but they will be around capital city. So where is the first fertile land? And if you will go through Mumbai in map, you will come to know that uh, the river Daisar originates here, the river Oshivara originates here, the uh, again now the Miti river originates here, you have Tulsi Lake here. So that's why this area has got a fertile crescent. Okay, so uh, whenever we talk of the human habitation and uh, first revolution, that was the farming revolution or the Neolithic revolution, we called it in archaeology. Uh, we tell people that, uh, that that started in the fertile crescent of Tigris and Euphrates river in the uh, in the Egypt in Egypt area. Okay, because that was the fertile crescent. So whenever we talk about Mumbai, my theory is. Uh, the area of RA is the fertile crescent of Mumbai. That's the most fertile land of Mumbai. And see, you can have trading activity, you can have traders here, you can have businesses here, but unless you have everyday food available, you can't prosper. So RA was the area responsible for the prosperity of the Mumbai. And that's the cradle of the civilization of Mumbai. Thank you so much. If you have questions, I am ready to answer it. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Hmm. Uh, if we can move on to the questions now. Yeah. yeah. The first one is uh, about the status of your project. Where can um, huh. uh, he find the, the project book or the notes? That's the question from okay. Mamadisha Sheikh. Okay. Okay. So uh, our proper uh, report, we have filed reports with uh, ASI right now and uh -huh. uh, just a moment uh, give me a moment okay so uh, we have uh, filed our report with ASI uh, of two years and uh, we wanted to come out with a book actually so what has happened that in between we all came together and we thought that uh, for an awareness level of common Mumbaikas we should come out with something uh, uh, some small handy book so there is a book published by Institute Saint Trust, that is India Study Center, which is available online. Uh, it is right now only in Marathi. It is called Sashtichi Gatha or Gatha Sashtichi. It is available online on Amazon in Kindle format and in book format also you can order. Uh, we are getting it translated and in a month or two, uh, you will be able to get it in English. Uh, this is for common people. And our uh, the whole research project report it's getting compiled right now, and I think in the uh, next six to seven months it will be out. Great, great. Uh, are there any other books which Parvez asks he can read about Solset? Uh, Solset, there is there is, uh, very few people have worked on that, and uh, basically this Solset Island exploration project of University Institute Saint Sate College. Uh, uh, is the project which has worked a lot on Salset Island. You know, uh -huh. people have worked on uh, caves here. People have worked on Jogeshwari caves. Dr. Walter Spink have worked on Jogeshwari cave. And uh, people have worked on caves here, but not on these islands, you know. Why, why we took up this project? Because, uh, you know, there's a heavy process of urbanization going around us right now. Okay. And everything is going down below under the, uh, you know, under buildings and Correct. so many things. So uh, you will surprise even recently there was uh, a sewage line uh, work going on by BMC at Kandivli uh, where I stay and uh, I could uh, I could collect a small remain of a, you know uh, a cultural remain from that digging oh. uh, just uh, some time back. So uh, there are so many things you know. So when this digging things starts, even this metro people when they started digging. Uh, we told them that let us uh, go to the site, let us permit to visit the site and maybe we'll find something there, you know, uh -huh. because this metro, uh, for metro thing, uh, they're digging all over Mumbai and uh, there are fascinating aspects, you know, means uh, one of the aspects which I will, uh, I would love to share it uh, here also. Uh, there was uh, digging going on. They were taking the uh, basic 
basically core out uh, you know because they wanted to know that uh, how much uh, size of a construction they can go for uh-huh. or how much of the weight this uh, rock can uh, take you know so they have taken core out so when they took the core out at worli and i had seen that uh, we could find easily uh, uh, two three fossils in that core you know uh-huh. so these are the these are various things you know but people haven't worked on uh, there are geological work done by some of the scholars but not exhaustive work you know so uh, we would like to have that geological map map of mumbai we are recently institution trust is also working on that part so i think uh, more and more people if they come to this exploration they will get training and uh, more and more people will start working on we can reconstruct <coughs> the history of mumbai vinayak you mentioned that uh, the padam hill lodged the oldest caves in mumbai yeah. Yeah. where would they have been uh very can... much very much near to the times of india hill right now very much near I to see. times of india hill yeah yeah uh on the opposite there side are, of the highway yeah. or uh no 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 uh, exactly just behind the times of india hill behind and if you if someone wants to read something then bhagwanlal indrajit has uh, published a research paper uh in 19th century uh and it is available online okay the gilbert hill that you mentioned extended all the way to yeah. to bander yeah was it lost by human quarrying or was it lost on account of wear, wear and tear nature reason no 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 human 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 beings our As activity always, our yeah. activity absolutely our activity there was no natural reason okay yeah, yeah. i'm just reading the other questions if yeah. any they're saying about how perfect the title is indeed they are revealing secrets uh om bharti says uh, they made multiple attempts to find the votive stupa and mahim but ah, no success it is absolutely no 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 it is it is absolutely on the road side and uh, you can go and easily visit but you know just the identification maybe uh, is uh, i think there is a small temple have now uh, come over it so uh, you can look for that small temple it is it is uh, a small stupa what you stupa and it is there because recently only our uh, students have visited there and they had come back so i know yeah it is there right now yeah so again uh, one must go and just look for it and now you have i have shown you the photograph also of that votive stupa so it is yes. it will be a little uh, easy to identify uh, staying with mahim do you believe in the legend slash theory that the police station was approximately the place where raja bim had his quarters uh no but uh, that must have been the place uh, because you know uh, there are so many remains so many remains of that big temple structure you know so that uh, temple must have been the place there yeah uh, okay. not not the uh, raja ka rajwada i don't think so okay but temple complex yes sure Bharat says that there is a claim by Sa- that Sashti was named after the Goans who came to uh-huh. work under the Shilara regime, and uh-huh. that they named it after Sashti in Goa. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a fact? Can you corroborate that? Uh, no, I think we find uh, uh, the name Sashti in uh, earlier period also. Uh, one of the inscription actually I am looking for is uh, not here in Mumbai. It is uh, somewhere in Italy's museum. I am just going. uh going to check that and uh that inscription uh, has that name sashti you know and even in this uh uh, uh which i sh- i had shown it to you 1368 that mentions sashti saha sashti yes proper mentions of saha sashti so uh i think that was there earlier also and that is there in the inscription ragu says uh, khaki should curate tours around places like this so let's get together build a core team of people round up experts like parap sir gather lots of money and go on a trip uh ragu would you like to coordinate that uh richard says uh, he would like to understand how to engage with some of these artifacts okay uh, in a more structured way i suppose he can read up on what you mentioned uh, Uh, as what is available in the reading material 
no and there is one more thing uh, which you can uh, that can be a starting point uh, there is a small course uh, a year long course i think not year long but of uh, 10 months actually okay. uh, by mumbai university uh, basics in archaeology so if you are absolutely interested in uh, you will get to know the basics of archaeology and that can be the starting point or otherwise there is a lot more material available actually uh, on net freely available so you can just go through that but on net there are so many things so people get little confused what to read and what not to and so, whether it's authentic and yeah 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 but yeah that can be that course can be a, a good starting point or there are uh, workshops various workshops archaeology workshops happening in city so one of the workshops you can attend and get to know the things ankur says we should send this recording and notes to the cm and other bureaucrats because he believes that saving ra is more important than saving the trees okay okay yeah so i have talked to uddhav thakre ji uddhav is uh, a good friend of mine uh, because uh, past 30 years i'm in the field of journalism so i have talked to him i have uh, given him uh, two three points but because of pandemic uh, uh, there's there's a problem so i think uh, after we all uh, come out of pandemic uh, the things will we hope to uh move move around the things lakshmi who lives in marol says that she's now intrigued to look into the well which is in her garden and she says that it looks oh, exploring oh. and she's going to look into it in further are there any efforts to preserve the gilbert hill or whatever remains of it uh see what has happened how religion wor- works you know so because of that gaudevi hill uh no builder could you know uh just slash down that hill and that hill is just there because uh, around the gilbert hill there used to be two three villages and the devi over the uh, over that gilbert hill uh, is the prime deity of the that villages of aboli and you know nearby villages uh, Ir- irala village so we have virale parle so that has come from irale parle you know so that irala village is very much nearby so that was the prime deity of uh, which is sitting over that hill top you know and because that is the deity no builder no builder so many builders have tried to you know cut down that hill but there was strong very 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 strong uh, uh, you know opposition from these villagers and no one could so we must thank that deity actually and religion has played an important role in saving uh, you know a geological formation uh there are mentions of rock carvings on padan hill what happened to those uh, bharat yeah, everything has gone everything has gone the we have lost everything we have absolutely lost nothing everything. remains at all nothing 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 absolutely nothing all right moving on uh was gilbert hill quarried for reclamation during the british or more recent times i guess more recent times uh no during the british it is also, uh, that started yeah that started and uh, that was in high speed recently mm. well, yeah, high speed okay where can jimmy read more on geology and fossils in mumbai uh geology uh, people have worked some of the scholars have worked uh, uh that work is very fascinating uh, but uh not publicly available so that is the unfortunate part of it uh, but yeah sukesh wala sir has worked on it dr viratkar has worked on it uh, then uh, one of the finest geologist uh, i just forgot his name but yeah geologists have worked on mumbai uh, but uh, that needs to be you know uh, corroborated with the evidences now geological evidences we are getting from the uh, digging of metro and getting from the metro cores you know because this metro course tells you the another story you know uh, how sahar was there previously and everything everything so that is again a separate uh, subject but uh, this tells you a separate story so uh, i think people needs to work out work on again on the geological mapping of mumbai but some of the small booklets are available again with the institution trust i think institution trust uh, has published geology of mumbai a small booklet uh, which has been written by professor viratkar and uh, the another scholar so uh, that that can be useful that can oh. be again a starting point for mumbai geology 
I mentioned you about you know that pillow lava. Yes. So one of the thing I would like to mention again is that pillow lava structures were there at uh, Shivdi, you know, on the Zerbai Varia Road, right. and I have seen that structures in uh, 85, 90 till 95. But then in that road widening process, we have lost again that pillow lava also, which used to be there at Shivdi, right? Uh, so we have lost that. So the process of urbanization is very fast in Mumbai, and that's why we think that uh, we need to move it, move around in Mumbai very fast. uh looking for the things out otherwise we'll be losing uh, many things what should rohit read to understand uh, thane's pre portuguese history uh thane's pre portuguese history there are ample things available uh the people like daud dalvi has exhaustively worked on that there are uh, you know ashila hara thane then thane thane there is ample material available in public domain there are various books uh might not be in english but in marathi yeah ample reading ample reading it's available okay people have worked on thane in a great sense uh that brings us to the end vinak but there are lots and lots of compliments interesting insightful exhilarating amazing and so on and so forth i think you get the picture thank oh. you very much for your time thank you to the audience for attending